Hello everyone, I am pleased to be speaking to you today from the traditional territory of the Squamish Nation here in North Vancouver and I would like to begin by wishing all of our STA families a happy and healthy new year on behalf of the administration and staff. As we prepare to welcome you back to school on Monday, we are aware that you will have many concerns and questions and so this address will hopefully address many of those and we also are going to be sending a letter home today via email that letter has some links in it, so please open the email and read the letter so that you have all of this information prior to returning to school. So students at this point are scheduled to return to school on Monday, January the 10th. That is a day two, and it will be a staff meeting schedule, so early dismissal. Parent and student responsibilities. Uh, these fall into three categories. Vaccinations, daily health checks, and masks. And these are things that parents and students can do to help keep our students safe. And in terms of uh, the importance, these are probably the three most important things we can do right now to prevent the spread of the latest variant uh, in our school community. So on the topic of vaccinations, uh, the vast majority of our staff are vaccinated and our students. And if someone has yet to be vaccinated, we certainly encourage you to get that done. The daily health checks are very important. No student can come to school right now if they are sick in any way. This is because the latest variant has symptoms which are very similar to a mild respiratory ailment such as a cold or mild flu and it may be difficult to distinguish between the two. So if a student is sick, they must stay home. If a student, family member or close contact tests positive for COVID-19, Vaccinated students must isolate for five days from the onset of symptoms and until they are symptom free. For unvaccinated students, the duration is 10 days. Students who have been potentially exposed must self-monitor for symptoms. They may come to school as long as they are completely asymptomatic, wear a mask and are careful around other people. We would like to direct your attention to two websites for the latest and most accurate information. For diagnosing a potential COVID case, there is a website called bcthrive.health. Uh, the link will be in the letter that we're sending home to you. And this is the place to go for the latest self-assessment tool to see whether or not you should get tested. For reporting cases and for isolation protocols, the best resource remains the BC Center for Disease Control's website at www.bccdc.ca. Masks. Students must wear masks at all times while at school, except when eating, when playing a wind or brass instrument, or engaged in strenuous physical activity. Most of our students have cooperated with this measure, despite the fact that it is uncomfortable to wear one most of the day. It is now very important that all students adhere to this, and I'm talking about wearing masks properly, over the nose and mouth, wearing them during lunch after you finish eating, and making sure that we do this uh, to the best of our ability. It's very important. Students can also consider upgrading from a cloth to a medical mask at this time. We have a supply here at the school, so if somebody doesn't have one of these, we can make one available to you. Um, you can also upgrade to a multi-layer type of mask, such as this one. Uh, this is one that the movie industry is using next door. Uh, you can even upgrade to what's called an N95 mask if you need to. So you definitely want to at least upgrade from a cloth mask to a medical mask which has more than one layer. During lunchtime, we would also ask that students uh, spread out from each other and try to avoid sitting across from each other face to face while eating. The school responsibilities. The health authorities have paused case reporting and contact tracing for now due to the high volume of cases. New reporting procedures for schools are coming, but for the short term we will not be sending out uh, case notification letters until we receive the new orders from the health authorities. The school is required to upgrade its communicable disease plan and make it available for staff, parents and students. This has been done and it is now posted on our website at www.aquinas.org. If you go to our website, you can click on the yellow banner, COVID-19 Updates, and it will be there for you. The school has been required to implement the following enhanced measures at this time. 
maximizing space between people, spreading students out as much as possible, avoiding face-to-face -face seating, continuing with the staggered lunch to reduce crowding during the longer break. We will also be closing the gym at lunch until further notice. Our staff and department meetings will be held virtually for now, and school gatherings and events, such as assemblies and liturgies, will also be held virtually for now. We will be li limiting visitors to those who directly support student learning or well-being. Parents who volunteer in the cafeteria, for example, are still able to come in and do that. Sports. Extracurricular sports tournaments, which involve multiple teams, have been paused for now. Practices and games were suspended this week, but will resume next week with games against single teams able to proceed. However, we will not be able to have spectators at those games. The provincial health order regarding face coverings requires all students, staff, and visitors to wear a mask indoors at school, except for the uh, few exceptions which have already been noted. School closures. We have been directed by the government to do everything possible to maintain continuity of learning at school, i.e. in person. We've been directed not to offer hybrid learning, for example, streaming classes at this time. Our teachers will continue to use Google Classroom to keep students informed of assigned classwork. However, it may be necessary for the school to close either partially, for example, one or two grades, or fully at short notice. These closures may be a health closure due to an outbreak or high case numbers, or they may be a functional closure, insufficient staff for continuity of in-person learning. Parents need to be aware that notice of such closures could come quickly, and parents should have plans for such an eventuality in place. Please stay tuned to your emails and messages from the school at this time. We are going to need rapid and effective communication to get us through this period. Upcoming events. Ski program today has been postponed. However, on January 14th, it remains a tentative go at this time after consultation with the mountain. The doors open on January 9th. This Sunday has been canceled. January 13th and 20th, which are Thursdays, will revert to a regular schedule, no weekly mass. The science fair on January the 28th will be modified to reduce crowding. The monthly mass on January 31st has been moved to February 2nd and will be virtual. For the time being, all events in February remain as scheduled for now. However, there have been some significant calendar changes, so please consult the online calendar for the latest version. The open house in February will have to be virtual. This is because a, a considerable amount of advanced planning is required for this event, and we need to know now which way it's going, so it will be virtual. Midterm exams. We recognize that this is one of the areas of greatest concern right now for students and their families, so uh, we would like to address this. So we are going to reduce the number of exams to lessen anxiety and stress on students, and in consideration of the instructional days which have been lost. We will reduce the number of exam days to reclaim some of the lost instructional days. At the same time, we would like to facilitate those exams which teachers believe still need to be held. We also need to facilitate the government literacy and numeracy assessments. We are scheduling the literacy assessment for grade 10s and grade 12s in January, and also a makeup numeracy for grade 12s who need to get that finished prior to graduation. At this time, we've not heard that those assessments have been moved, so we are proceeding with them until we hear otherwise. All exams in January will be limited to a maximum of a two-hour sitting to reduce the duration that the students are together. The exam schedule will be shared with staff today, so you will get an attachment in your message, which will look like this, and it will tell you which exams are being written and when they are being written. I want to emphasize that the exam schedule is very much subject to change. If we were to lose additional instructional days, or if we have a very high rate of absenteeism during the next two weeks, then we may have to make additional changes. And we will always consider the level of stress and anxiety and the ability to hold these exams uh, in a way that's meaningful in terms of the number of writing. 
So to conclude, we're now in a new phase of a pandemic. This new strain is more transmissible and it has a shorter incubation period, but the symptoms are almost always milder or even asymptomatic. Most infections will result in a common, in common upper respiratory ailment, such as a runny nose, cough, or sore throat. So again, if you are sick, you must stay home. We all need to do our part to get through this. We need to employ all of our personal protective measures, physical distancing, hygiene, washing our hands, masks, vaccines, and daily health checks at this time. Our school has fared very well so far during this pandemic. We've not had a student infection since February of last year. So we will get through this latest wave if we all pull together, and we look forward to welcoming everyone back on Monday morning. Thank you, and God bless.